Hi, and welcome to In Focus. This is Jabbar Lubaidi. Our episode in this program uh, will take you uh, to the global sense of, uh, call it uh, global phenomena, uh, universal phenomena. A lot of people, young people, probably people with, with seasoned experience, they think about the world in, in different ways that probably some of you and myself think. And we, we thought, uh, uh, my producer and myself, it would be really uh, great uh, to have, you know, the new generation uh, to give us their take on, on the global connection and how we can, uh, as they say, uh, bridge the gap, whether it's a gap between religions, misunderstanding between cultures, uh, probably even on economic issues, a lot of issues that people actually take for granted and they think they know a lot about these issues or about these topics. But when you know you, you, you meet a person, an individual, uh, and they start talk about these issues, and you figure out, you know what, I would like to know more about these issues. So uh, in this program, we would like to give you that you know little cracks in that wall, and we call it really tearing uh, the down the walls, tearing down the walls, meaning you're opening a new windows, uh, just to negotiate our differences, to try to understand each other. And I have on my very uh, right, uh, as a young student, you graduated from, from UMass Dartmouth, yeah. uh, and so uh, uh, under, uh, actually Eric uh, Andrade will talk about how we're going to tear some of the walls, and also on my very, well, far right, uh, I have Andrea Armit. Also, she graduated from UMass Dartmouth, and she's going to share her views with us because they are working. And this message is for you, uh, my uh, good viewers, that they have a conference. I think in two days, three days, it will be on Saturday, October 16th. Uh, and they will talk about this. They will give you direction, and and uh, and you know the most important thing: you're gonna meet new people, and you're gonna taste new food. So we'll, let's start with you. Uh, what? Give me the general idea. Uh, what's motivated you to actually call for for this conference, uh, for tearing uh, down the walls? I think like one of the biggest things I noticed for myself and a lot of people within the community that I live in whether it be um, locally in New Bedford or just in the country itself and even traveling outside of the country is that oftentimes we go through our struggles in isolation and like we don't share um, information, share our struggles, share our triumphs with each other and a lot of times because we're going through things in isolation the problems continue to occur and what's going on in our community is a lot of groups of people mm -hmm have been isolated for so long and the dynamics of their situations are so similar to other people's struggles or issues in their life and if the two people and the two groups could actually connect with each other bridge the gap between generations between um, religions between um, social economic groups and actually see that there's so much there's a common interconnection between the struggles that are going on locally globally um, individually um, community-based, and um, start working to, to actually bridge that gap and share resources. What, when you were a student uh, and you must Dharmas, did you feel that or exercise or f feel that gap between, you know, the cultures in, in your campus? When I first got there, most definitely, like, you find groups of people that um, just go into a college cafeteria and you'll look and you'll see that a group of Cape Verdeans are sitting with a group of Cape Verdeans and the Asian students are sitting with Asian students and you have the white population is sitting all, mostly together and there's people that bridge those gaps and, and travel in between but for the most part uh, the cultures tend to stay together and a lot of the groups we don't share or have any idea of what's going on like you were speaking earlier about events at your college. Yeah. So, so, so physically they are in the same place same location, but culturally they are torn apart yeah. because they don't understand. And I see you're nodding, that right. you're agreeing to it. <laughs> um, yes, I, I saw that as well, that there's such a division in a place that's supposed to unify young people, a college, a university. So um, having seen that this college is so di divided in itself by cultures and everything, it just brings, in, brings it into a broader context 
uh, what happens when that happens in the community. Okay. When uh, the city of New Bedford, which neighbors uh, the town of Dartmouth, where the, un the University of Massachusetts There's Dartmouth lies, um, people don't realize the interdependence needed in order to succeed in any way. That's what this conference is about, to actually sh spread knowledge about um, our abilities and what we can do together as, as a community and not just as one person trying to make a difference, but as a, a whole population. Now, who, who sponsored uh, this conference? It's coming um, on Saturday, uh, October 16th. Right, October 16th from 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, it's actually a joint effort, um, including a couple of extracurricular activities from the University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth, yes. and nonprofit organizations in New Bedford, such as Treatment on Demand, where Ag Eric actually works out of. Um, so this will go on for six hours. We have uh, six speakers, I believe, um, full with workshops and afterwards uh, a spoken word show. Okay. Um, promoted by La Soul Renaissance. Uh, and could so. uh, uh, could you tell us about the topics that they're going to address the six speakers? I mean, do you have any ideas? Yeah, in the beginning, um, to start it, we have uh, a poet, Everett Hoagland, who's been actually doing like poetry yes. for 30, 40 years. He's read his poems in Cuba, Ghana when they got the independence. So he's been involved with a lot of the black arts movement and, and resistance in, within the United States to create social change for people to change their lives and power groups and also not just within the United States but also outreach into other communities. Okay. So he's going to begin with some poetry that ties in the local resistance that was going on in, in New Bedford um, to try and educate a lot of the youth population at the school has no idea the history and the depth of the history of people living within our community and the efforts that were made to make social change. And then from there, we're going to go into a panel. Um, and the panel is just an amazing group of people. And it, um, Jabril Kazan, who was one of the original four people that started the um, sit-in movement in Greensboro, North Carolina in 1964, him and three of his friends decided that they were not going to allow um, there to be segregation in their community. And they decided to sit in in a lunch counter. And they risked their life. They were beaten. They were arrested. They were, had death threats. And they ended up per persevering and creating yes. a, a change in our society. Many people have considered him and the group um, of people. It was really a community, um, the beginning of the um, civil rights movement and empowering people to take their action and into civil disobedience and yes. use their voice. So he's going to be um, one of the panel uh, speakers. Gloria Clark, who was a white woman that was involved with the um, Black Panther Party in New Bedford and Boston. She was also a member of the um, SNCC, which is a Student Nonviolent uh, Commission. I forget what the acronym stands for, but she has a lot of history from dating back from the 60s of working um, with anti-war movements, with um, women's liberation movements, with the black power struggle. Mm -hmm. and, and she's going to be a panel speaker, Ross Grace, whose father was, in fact, um, involved with the Black Panthers in New Bedford. And um, he actually started an organization in the early 90s, which was called the Sons of Panthers, which was basically educating the community and empowering young, male, young males, in particular African-American males who are at risk in our, on our culture and our society due to the, the situation in, in the inner cities that we've been seeing this summer go wild. And, and New Bedford alone has been countless deaths and shootings. In Boston, there's been over 50 homicides uh, this year. And it's young males of color, in particular, that are targeted for that, as well as the um, incarceration rate for African Americans is phenomenal compared to like the population that lives in this country. There's more African Americans in jail than are in college right now and that's basically one of the things that he was working on a lot was trying to empower these young mm -hmm. youth to get them to steer down a path that would bring them to a brighter future to teach them that they could go to college, that they could own their own businesses, that they could be productive members of their community um, and also... So, so are you looking for ways and means to empower the younger generation or the youth or you are considering uh, of ways to out to reach out to your community and get them to understand the issues among themselves and also to connect the campus um, or i would say campuses because i think we are lucky we have so many uh, campuses, you know, and I think our communities uh, need their services as well as they also, you know, they, the, the campuses themselves need the community to come in and, 
And so uh, this is the empowerment. Is it? Is it, I mean, it is the right word to use. As you, you empower, you know, the, the it, population. Yes. It is the right word to use. Actually, the first step of empowerment is education, and what we try, what we are trying to do right now is just put get the word out and let people know that there are resources here available to you, and there are older role models, positive role models, who are trying to help. We obviously see a difference, and though. The two of us were not born in New Bedford. You know, we're not from New Bedford. There is a dire urgency that needs to be accounted for, and it needs to be um, paid attention to. So um, with the help of the university that has unbelievable resources that mm -hmm. perhaps could be available to the youth in New Bedford in a, a number of different ways. Um, for example, I believe uh, for the past couple of years during the summer, there was a sports camp. Um, the city of New Bedford funded it, mm -hmm. but it was taking place at the university. And it took kids from, children from the ages 12 to 16, out of their immediate environment and just down the street a couple of miles to the university where there is a field to play in, where it can be safe. Mm -hmm. And I think safety is one of the main priorities for New Bedford youth these days. Um, this past week there, have, there were two murders in two days in midday, one at 1 p.m., one at 5 p.m. I'm not willing to accept that. So I, I think nobody should. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Except so that too. Um, this education aspect is the first step. The next step will be thought of afterwards. Um, but empowerment is our goal. And once people realize that they do, that they are empowered and they have the ability to take that and first this is, step. This is actually for within their rights. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know? Mm -hmm. And now, can you, I mean, did you get the media uh, involved? We are this, trying to. I mean, to. I mean, do you, what, did you have? Uh, do you find resistance there, and like people, they don't, they are not interested in covering these uh, stories. I think that what happens a lot of times is people don't realize something or don't um, understand the connection. Like we don't understand that the fact that like we have these communities like um, that are. There's a divide between them. There's one person living in Dartmouth. There's one person living in New Bedford. There's someone in Bridgewater, for example. Mm. And now if something happens in Bridgewater, and these two communities ignore what happened there or don't see it as affecting them directly. And one of the things that we have to break down is if that you, if you if you sink, I swim. You know, or if you swim, I sink. That's that's the dialogue. You know, between right. <laughs> you know, that's I don't, I yeah, I don't pay attention to what's going on in my neighborhood as long as I'm I'm safe. But you know, I, I I find it very interesting that when you mention the very term um, uh, resistance, you know, I think I think you guys you wanna you wanna send a kind of uh, understanding, a new understanding with these words because I think the culture is not so hospitable to to hospitable to these words like resistance. You know, resistance like uh, a kind of the notion is, is something people they don't necessarily appreciate. I mean, do you have any plan for that and say, this is what we mean by the word resistance. Well, this is uh, what we mean by, uh, you know, other uh, associated, uh, you know, uh, um, probably very provocative uh, phrases or, or, or terminologies. I think because the culture is, is, is so sensitive to these things. I mean, I mean, just a thought, I mean, did you, I, th I think that's a truth and that's something that I need to deal with myself. Yeah. But that's one of the things that is breaking down the walls because that's an exactly. idea and then, then the perception of that word is that resistance means that I want to take something from you or it's, it means yes. it's resistance. Break the law probably. Yeah. When, you, so when you say resistance, I'm going to resist you and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on the highway and, and, and make 90 instead mm -hmm. of uh, 65. I mean, so you want to qualify these things, you know, this, this, I mean, do you have any plan for that? So people, they can reach and say, you, you know what, this is a, a new narrative. I mean, we don't understand because, you know, I mean, it, it says, I, I hope our camera will get this, uh, one of them, uh, you know, say, tearing down the walls, bridging the gap. So we have a cultural gap and we have really linguistic gap too. Okay. I mean, we're using that, the new narrative. I mean, so I hope you can uh, just elaborate on this little bit on, on, I mean, do you, in your own mm. experience, you find people like when you say resistant or other things, you know, they say, oh, what was that? You know, they shake their hands. And then when, when you start really uh, breaking the eyes, you say, no, no, you know what we mean? We mean we are working together uh, just to, to, for the uh, betterment of our 
community, our society. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course, there would there will be um, a connotation with any strong, heavy word yeah. like that, and the, the, um, the reactions can come from anywhere as immediate as as home, yes, um, or as remote and, and far away as international relations. Yes. So if you uh, claim that you are making a movement, yes. people will look at it very skeptically, very, very skeptically. Yes. However, you need to prove to them what it means. And this is one step in proving Beautiful. it. Beautiful. So in, in um, our way of redefining or um, changing the connotation of the word movement, activist, resistance, anything, um, we do need to prove it, and this is one step. Um, after that, we will we'll try to bridge the gaps, whether it be age, wealth gaps, linguistic, ba linguistic barriers. Yes. We will do as much as we can, yeah. but we are targeting those people interested in joining forces with us almost. Exactly. We, uh, this conference is for other activists who really uh, feel limited or feel that they're not sure how to go about being active or even being very interested in, in a conference like this. If people are not sure how to get involved, this conference is for them, and we will tell them how to get involved because there's yeah, so many opportunities. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's really well open. said, uh, Andrea. And uh, and uh, you know, people sometimes also they take uh, and I'm I'm uh, I intend to mention this because you know sometimes even people they don't want, or the media in general they don't talk about these issues. And I say when you say activist, you know, and I think I I uh, I spoke uh, we talk about this. You know, people, they don't understand this very word, activist, well, which means, you know, uh, engagement, which means involvement, which means you go and provide help, which means you, you assist others, that, right? I mean, that's, right. that's I think, what, what, what uh, the, 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 the exactly word entails. That's exactly what it is. You are active in your community. In your, in your community, on your campus. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if you, this is in focus, and if you just uh, join us, we are talking about tearing down uh, the walls. And my guess is um, on my uh, my right. I think if the camera will get it, that Eric uh, uh, Andrade, and also we have uh, Andrea Armet. And they thought, you know, they're both. Uh, they are part of the committee and the organizations that they uh, organize this conference, which will be held on Saturday, and um, and that's October 16th. And all um, our um, you know community members are welcome uh, to the to the conference. And you're going to provide them with, uh, what, food and flyers and pamphlets and, you know, tons of information. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, who, who, what kind of food do the people find there? Well, well international we will, <laughs> or, uh, we international? will have international food. We are actually looking for more donations of food from any um, extracurricular group or yes. student group who feels that they can help in one way or another. So um, if Bridgewater State Campus does have a... a um, extracurricular group perhaps uh, from a Latino country or a uh, Muslim country, an Indian country, we are still accepting food donations so mm -hmm. we can uh, let people taste the different cultures in, of the world. And afterwards we are providing entertainment in uh, terms of, uh, like I said before, a spoken word show featuring Christopher Johnson who is an amazing spoken word artist from Providence, uh, Busted Fro, who is an independent, who, they are in, an independent hip-hop uh, group and um, it's going to be a very, very entertaining show. Aside from doing this wonderful, uh, you know, um, I think, uh, initiative, doing a conference, uh, you know, bringing people together and then uh, they will share their experiences um, educationally, intellectually. Uh, beside this, have you done anything on smaller scale uh, on campuses or off campuses? Yeah. Could you address that, please? We've done a lot, actually, in um, the last couple of years. Um, that's one of the reasons I think that this was necessary is because there's a lot of groups of people that are actually trying to make change in the community. I think a lot of people right now have a feel a need to make something happen. Something has to happen. Something needs to change right now because the way we're living, the way we're dealing with each yes. other as a, as a nation, number one, there's a problem with that. There's a problem with the fact that kids are growing up without hope that we have one third of a population in New Bedford dropping out of high school, and um, there's kids deciding that using handguns and resolving conflicts with violence and, and murder is acceptable, and it's desensitized to all these issues. So there's a lot of groups that have been actually working, and we've done um, anti-war rallies. We've done rallies um, around recently, most recently, the violence in New Bedford. And Thursday night, we're having a rally in downtown New Bedford. Yes calling for uh, something to happen because what's going on is we're putting a lot of money as a society into 
putting out fires rather than preventing fires before they happen. If we invested the same amount of money that we invest in putting out the fires, we'd have a better return. We'd reap better rewards because like any fireman will tell you, it's cheaper to put a, a fire alarm in a home than to rebuild a home. And that's what's going on with our communities. A lot of the money that was going into social programming mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and providing for communities, whether it be AIDS education, AIDS outreach, or youth programs that provide youth with activities for the summer, or even teaching uh, youth nonviolent um, means of resolving conflict, conflict resolution, or, or, or negotiation, yeah, yeah. conflict management. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what you do. Now, uh, on the sport, you know, because you know, I mean, uh, people they enjoy sports, and uh, and do you, do you do a lot of activities that's when you bring, you know, the the youth uh, to play, or face off to each other, and then do something, and then you know, physically will kind of discharge all this energy. Unfortunately, because um, the summer program was dismantled from last summer, yes. uh, the sports program, um, resources are just very hard to come by. For example, there's no transportation um, that's very, uh, there's no uh, evident transportation that we yes. can use to transport kids from New Bedford to a UMass campus. And safety, again, is the number one priority, and we cannot guarantee that in uh, a city of New Bedford. Okay. So. Um, D speaking of safety, uh, do you have any uh, enter kind of an interactive line on connection with the, with the local police, uh, the police stations, you know, so they can help you there? I mean, you go there and you tell them this is this is what we are doing and this is what we're looking for and we would appreciate your help. There has been conversations with the police. I've been involved with meetings with the chief of police and the mayor of New Bedford. Unfortunately, it seems to be like um, that the way that the actual policing gets done in, in New Bedford, it's not really community policing, whereas like the, the police that are coming in are, are viewed as outsiders and they treat the people inside as um, almost like a prison without walls. Um, so there is definitely yeah, but, walls but, between uh, Eric, them. excuse me to interrupt you, but, you know, I mean, tearing down the walls, you know, you see, uh, this is how I see it, you know, there are small walls and, and thicker laws and so you you want to start with 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 small things and if if we can if you can get the the people around you uh, helping you i think you can then reach out uh, to the larger uh, uh, society uh, i think that's very important because we don't really i don't think it's, it's uh, advisable to to give up i think we always if you communicate and communicate our uh, uh, message as effect effectively as possible, I think people will respond because they said, uh, yeah, why not? Because I'm, I'm helping my, my neighborhood, I'm, I'm helping my community, I'm, I'm, I'm doing them, you know, good, good service. Um, uh, so uh, don't you think, you know, you need to go and, and you know, talk with, with the selectmen, talk with, uh, with the police, uh, you know, uh, representatives, talk with, with your congressmen, you know, because Again, uh, you you know, I mean, you 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 may address this again in another another kind of uh, of language or, or comments. I think people they we need to provide the 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 understanding, the mutual understanding, so people they feel exactly safe. So all of them will be on the same page, on target. You know what? We would like to tear all these walls, all these differences. We respect each other. You know, you you do whatever you you, you want to do. Nobody will, 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 will bother you as long as it, it fits, you know, within the laws, within, you know, the social norms that acceptable right. by the society. Right. I understand what you mean. And there is one big separation in New Bedford between uh, the local government and the, and the community, mm -hmm. um, and that's distrust. The community of New Bedford, the residents who live there, um, most of them are not affluent. Okay. Um, uh, let me see. There's a huge drug, drug use uh, population, 45% of the people with AIDS and HIV uh, got the virus from intravenous drug use. So um, there's a, a lot of ignorance going around, there's a lot of hopelessness, and there's a, a lot of desperation, and there's no trust in between the community and, and local and government. I think, and I think you, you really addressed that earlier when you said education is the, is the key factor. And uh, so how, as, as young, you know, two young activists and you want to do this, uh, this great mission, I think, you know, to, to uh, do service or, or help your community, how you can utilize education 
uh, in, 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 in Bedford or in surrounding areas. I mean, when you say education, you're talking about elementary school, uh, uh, the high school, middle school, or colleges. I mean, uh, w how you see that uh, as, as a tool, which is important, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to, to actually help you guys to accomplish some of your objectives? I think for me it's like the culture, changing the culture, like culture is so important and like finding a way to transform the culture to be a culture where people are active, active in their community and they're trying to make change within their community like and I think it, it's all of that, it's the elementary schools, it's the high schools, it's outside of the schools, it's outreaching into the church, it's bridging these gaps between yes. all of them and it's education on our part because there's a lot and meeting with the police like you were saying that I have no idea of where they're coming from it's me putting myself in their shoes and them putting themselves in my shoes and then we look at the 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 perspective in a different way like there's so many different perspectives to look at something there's 360 mm -hmm. degrees that we could look at something and that's what needs to happen we all need to come together and say this is how we see it this is why I see it that way how do you see it and then we'll get a better picture of the truth like there was a uh, a statement that I read once from, a, uh, I think his name was Rumi, where he said the truth is like an elephant in a room and we're all blind and we're just feeling it and we're feeling one part of it until true. we all share what we're seeing, we're never going to know what the truth is. Yeah, truth and facts, has, you know, they have many, many faces and, and many uh, dimensions and you want to uh, have a chance and give a chance to yourself and other to uh, uh, look and see how people and interpretations too you know i mean because people they have different perception as you as you mentioned that now uh, uh, any last message for the community and the people that to, to help you out you know like um, you know we'll give you uh, free <laughs> 30 seconds uh, each uh. for me i would say basically um we're trying to build solidarity between different groups get different groups together it's not about necessarily what I've said here there's going to be more different people and their perspectives is going to be I would imagine different from mine but as long as you have a passion and a, and a concern for what's going on we need to build family in, in our community we need to learn about each other's struggles I need to know where you're coming from and what's going on with you and then in that strength that, of uniting there's strength like the fingers alone break easy but when we combine them together there's strength in that and that's what we need to do is draw our resources together and create solidarity. Very good. And uh, and uh, anything else you want to um, add? It's hard to follow, Eric. But <laughs> um, I think I'm just going to uh, talk about where this is. Again, this is at UMass Dartmouth University of Massachusetts, Dartmouth. Yes. This Saturday, uh, October 16th from 3 p.m. Uh, to camera there. 9 p.m. And yeah. I believe contact information will be on the screen. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're going to put it in the screen. Okay. If you can, uh, please uh, take this uh, uh, poster. And um, so that would be on, uh, I don't see it on the, on, yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, I know it's, uh, but uh, that's, uh, that's the poster and it's uh, available. Do you have any website? There's a uh, website, um, Freeing Ourselves, www.freeingourselves.com. Yes. And we'll have information on it as well as other information about events to follow. And uh, you have also a phone number. Um, um, that's 508-999-8178 uh, that uh, you can use. And it's on, and you're going to be on your screen so as well. Okay. And it's, uh, again, uh, we invite you uh, to go and, and enjoy the people, enjoy the, the event, and also... Um, um, enjoy the food and uh, well um, Andrea Amit thank you so much and uh, Eric uh, Andrea thank you so mm, much for you. your time it was been wonderful and also I would like to invite uh, our community to uh, visit us at Bridgewater State College because uh, see for Muslim Ramadan is uh, is coming soon on, on Friday after tomorrow today is uh, October 13 and October 15 will be the first day of Ramadan and um, so uh, the BSC will uh, uh, actually uh, organize one, uh, one night there will be on the October 22nd. Thank you so much uh, for watching in progress and have a good uh, day. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you. We appreciate thank you. it.